Welcome to the technical forum here at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries in the year of 2015 here at the Hanover Fair. Every 15 minutes we'll hear interesting talks about uh, the hydrogen industry. I'd also like to welcome our online guests. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We are live streaming here from the fair. Our next topic will be the quality issue of graphite bipolar plate production for fuel cells. And for that, please welcome with me on stage CEO of the Eisenhut GmbH und Co. KG, Dr. Thorsten Hickmann. Big hands, please. Yeah, a warmly welcome, although the time is already uh, passed a little bit and I'm the last speaker. I hope I can uh, bring you some info, additional information to this topic. Um, you were so kind and introduced the topic of the day. So we are in the field of uh, graphite bipolar plates for fuel cell, but also for other applications. Uh, first, some words about our company. Our company is located not far from me, about 100 kilometers in the south of Hanover in the Harz Mountain area. And we have three business lines. The one business line is mold making business for uh, automotive machine building industry. The second business line is uh, production of plastic and rubber parts. And the third business line for a couple of years now is uh, production of bipolar plates for all um, electrochemical applications such as fuel cells, redox flow batteries and other uh, topics, as well as a gasket. This is a typical supply chain we have. So we have a CAT CAM solution over here uh, in-house. Then we have the mechanical park for the milling and eroding and lathing machines, as well as the uh, injection molding department, which is able to produce plastic and rubber parts as well. For the fuel cell business, we have uh, the compounding lines. Uh, as well as the injection molding technology and also with additional functions such as gaskets and uh, other things. So if we talk about the quality issues so for bipolar plates, we see also um, often the demands of the customer because when you want to have to build up a fuel cell stack, which you can see over there already and all over the uh, hydrogen uh, area, so you have to build stack by stack plate and uh, therefore the tolerance is an important issue, uh, as, uh, especially as far as the flatness and the thickness is concerned, and therefore um, we have to pay a lot of attention to it. Uh, another important thing is uh, certainly the electrical conductivity, because the bipolar plates in a fuel cell stack or also in a battery have the function of uh, uh, leading the electrical uh, energy outside and also for the distribution of um, the uh, gases on the other hand, but mainly in order to transport the electricity within the stack to the end plates. Um, since we have uh, also electrochemical reaction in the stack, we uh, need also <coughs> uh, some thermal aspects, such as a good thermal conductivity. So this is also very important. And um, the fourth thing is the surface roughness, because um, there the surface is very important in order to have a good transport area of the gases. And um, uh, on the additionally, you do not want to have uh, high permeability. That means that the gases which flow through the channels in the stack, uh, they don't need to go through the bipolar plate. They only need to go into the direction of the membrane unit. So therefore, it's also very important to have a low permeability. And finally, we want to have some good characteristic, mechanical characteristics such as tensile strength and uh, a good flexular modular strength. For the dimensions, um, it is very important to discuss at the very early stage with the customer about the potential options. And at the end of the day, the technology is then uh, successful when uh, the cost of the whole system is low. And this can be achieved also very early 
uh, by stepping into a molding technology. And therefore, we recommend already our customers with uh, that's already some 200, 300 plates. It makes sense to step into a molding technology as a compression molding. And um, then you skip down from 100 or 150 euros per plate down to uh, 20 or 25 uh, euros per plate. So you have a uh, cost advantage uh, which is five times better than uh, the standard milling technology. And already at 200 plates, and if a stack has, I don't know, 10 or 20 plates, so after 10 stacks, it's worth to think about the mold for bipolar plates. So this is a very early stage, and it is very cost effective. So for that reason, we uh, discussed with our customer in a very early stage uh, already to step into the molding technology. And uh, in the same time, we also have to discuss about the tolerances, because when milling a plate, it is much more, uh, or usually, the tolerances are better and smaller than with molding. So by molding, you have normally uh, slightly bigger tolerances, which has to be considered in the stacking concept and also the gasket concept. For these reasons, we offer to our customers also especially gasket and sealing technology, which fits 100% to the system and to the bipolar plate. Yeah, and um, for uh, coming with the cost down, we have several steps. So uh, this means, on the one hand, that we have uh, at the first step the milling prototypes, at the second step compressed mold with a certain area and a certain volume. And for the high-end, high-tech volume, we recommend also injection molding technology to our customers. Uh, so um, together, we can step up, step uh, depending on the volume for the different technology, which makes sense in this field. Um, the first part was now the topic of tolerances and dimensions. Now I skip to the electrical conductivity. Here we have worked out a new system where we are able to uh, look at the different parts of the plates, uh, at the electrical conductivity without destructing, destroying them. And then we can do a conductivity mapping, which is able to um, look at the surface of the whole plate in order to have a good conductivity distribution. Here we have already also the possibility, not for smaller, but also for bigger plates, that there's this size, which is 1,200 millimeters in length. So there it is also important to have a good distribution of the whole plate all over with a good electrical conductivity, as well as the thermal conductivity, as well as um, the mechanical issues. And therefore we have uh, uh, worked out the so-called so conductivity mapping. In this conductivity mapping, there you can see um, already um, where it's a good distribution, and this conductivity mapping gives you also very good information about um, the thermal conductivity, the mechanical characteristic, and the homogeneity of the plate. So this is uh, our new, newly developed measurement system in order to have a good uh, plate characteristics at the end of uh, the day. Here we have tested uh, uh, also the, uh, uh, in line, the certain number of bipolar plates. In this case, we had over 50 plates where we measured for each plate the electrical conductivity uh, on different points, and then we collected the data together and get a kind of medium value, which is a good basis in order to um, have a quality indication. And here you see that this figure, for instance, is slightly higher, and for this reason, we tend to do, uh, to say, okay, these are the, uh, in this case, we have an additional issue of um, uh, thermal or electrical resistivity, where we say this plate is not good for uh, the further development, so we sort them out. 
as mentioned before, before besides uh, dimensions and electrical conductivity, the next step is also a question of permeability. So we have uh, developed a new measurement device where we are able to uh, measure the permeability of bipolar plates. So we have uh, we put them in a certain atmosphere where we put. Uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, gas on it. On the other hand, we put a, we do an evacuation. So we evacuate the standard air out of this active area, and then we see uh, what is happening over a time axis. And there we can find out and figure out um, whether the pl plates are permeable or not. And this has been also proven technology uh, for very thin plates. Uh, one of the tra uh, one of the big issues in the fuel cell business is to reduce the the volume of the system. So uh, you can reduce the volume of the system by reducing the volume and the size and the thickness of the components. And the bipolar plates is after the mayor uh, one of the most important uh, issues in in a stack. So if you can reduce the volume of the bipolar plates, you can reduce the volume of the whole system. And therefore, we have worked out a new technology which we can uh, use uh, also in for the inline quality uh, control system in order to find out what is going on or not. Yeah, finally, last but not least, here are some measurement devices for the electrical, uh, for the um, gaskets as well. So we can, when we have an integrated solution for the gasket, we also can measure uh, whether the gasket and the bipolar plate is completely 100% uh, connected with to, uh, themselves. So there's no uh, chance that the gases can uh, uh, go out except to into the direction of the mayor. And we also uh, offer to our customers uh, certain um, traceability options that we can engrave uh, the bipolar plates or the gasket with a laser signature so you at every time of the day you can uh, scan the function the, the characteristics of the bipolar plates to it and uh, have an hundred percent information of the product you use yeah overall these uh, are the uh, potential issues uh, last but not least, my last two slides, I want to demonstrate where we are working actually on it, on uh, 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 research topics. There's one topic, uh, a project uh, which is EU funded uh, called Eureka. This is a project where it is going to be to build up a new, uh, newly developed system for a uh, micro CHP, micro uh, fuel cell system for the household applications. And there we have developed a new bipolar plates, a new gasket system. And secondly, the second system is for high temperature PEM fuel cell business, where we work on a new uh, technology as far as the whole system is concerned. Uh, this system is uh, equipped with newly developed mares on the one hand and also with newly developed bipolar plates and gasket as well. So these are our actual research topics uh, where we work actually on it. And um, yeah, the projects uh, are still running a little bit and um, maybe next time I can uh, present you some of the results. Last not but not least, we are also looking at uh, new material developments such as new compound materials since we have the capability of making our own compounds in our factory we are always looking together with our customer what are the needs what we can do and where the traces and this could be uh, mostly definitely lower cost materials that means with the same mechanical electrical and tolerances materials which are better in pricing and processing and also better in electrical conductivity and uh, for the applications we are focused on low temperature PEM fuel cells high temperature PEM fuel cells redox flow batteries and electrolyzers thank you for your attention Thank you also from my side. Are there any questions from the audience? Um, so you're talking about how you're using plastic to add new materials. Have you looked at any type of metal alloys to add replacement properties? 
Yeah, we, um, the question was um, whether we are looking also into hybrid systems, so metal inlays or other inlays. In fact, yes, we are looking at it at the moment. This is one of the research fields we are covering right now uh, in order to combine the maybe different advantages of different materials uh, together, yes. Uh, you know that carbon, that means these graphite plates have no, almost no corrosion. This is the one big issue of the bipolar plates for graphite on the one hand. On the other hand, the metal bipolar plates, which is not our um, main issue, they have a better electrical conductivity. So now in order to combine the two technologies might be helpful to uh, work on these hybrid systems, yes. Any other questions at this time? Okay, then I thank you for your presentation. Yes. Last presentation on, of the day. Thank you. Thank you, and I hope to, to all see you later at the networking evening, and I wish you a great fair. Thank you very much. This was the last topic here in the technical forum. Tomorrow at 4 p.m., the system project we was just discussed here will also have a slot here in the technical forum. Tomorrow morning, we'll start with BioZEC, the demonstration of a high efficiency carbon negative energy production at 10 a.m. in the morning. For now, I close this technical forum and I wish you a wonderful evening.